answer on the beat. love you and I will always love you and I will forever love you no matter how much you do you can never repay God for what he gives what he gave and what he will give you constantly giving you life to give you a chance to fix what you need to fix who gives the thief breath to commit his crime Hashem why? Because it's free choice. You make your choice, and then he's going to make his. In the end, you repent, you're golden. You don't, it's going to be a major problem, yo. Major, major. Just karma alone should show every single person in this world that there's a God. There is nothing by coincidence. How could it be that this happened in such a way that he got what he gave back in the exact same way? How could it be? Because karma, right? So who's directing the karma? God. Give him his props, yo. Stop playing with him, yo. They're going to do everything in their power to try to prove that God does not exist. And while doing that, they're already proving that he exists. Because if I thought something didn't exist, I wouldn't even spend a second on it. I would keep it moving and go on to the next thing, you understand? Because it doesn't exist. The fact that they feel the urge to fight him already shows you how real he is. And then you just look at how vast the universe is and all the things that are going on. Like I told someone the other day, yo, the day a human being can make rain come from heaven? Okay, then I'll say maybe God isn't as great as I thought he was, you know? God forbid. What are you, dumb? Just submit, fall back, and say he's the greatest, and you good. That's it. That's it. This is what this whole world is about, yo. Are you honest and truthful or not? That's it. It's very simple. God is the truth. That's one of his names. He'll slice the world in half. Half will be the truth. Half will be fake. It might be much more than half, yo. How many people? Why? Because there's no God. There's no wisdom. You know when you're fake? When you don't have God in your life, then your perspective is not good. Let me break it down to you, yo. The Torah is like an angel guiding you in this world. Keeping you away from sin. Keeping you humble. Making you fear God and shun evil. Making sure that you watch what you say when it comes out of your mouth. Knowing that they weigh the words heavy in heaven. So you don't curse. No need. Don't go tell your friend, yo, did you know Johnny just did this and then, you know, to get your friend upset because you know it might annoy him? Like, what did you gain by telling him? Nothing. You obviously said it to provoke some kind of drama. You understand? It's so interesting, yo. And a lot of your friends, they're going to tell you how much they love you and how they, just like King David said, yo. So true. And in the end, with their actions, you see it's all fake and met. Truthful. Look at the words. Aleph, Mem, Tuf, right? They all stand on two pillars so they're firm. And then you go Sheker, right? They all have like a point. The Shin, the Kof, and the Resh. <laughs> Limzy, you know what I mean? Because you'll destroy the world when you play with the truth. That's really what it is, man. Let me break it down to you, yo. Justice, truth. Why you think the Goyim go to the street, go psychotic, no justice, no peace. They'll rip out your front Lawn <laughs> and break your windows, yo, because no justice, no peace, you know what I mean? So, what do we see? We see that when these pillars get broken, chaos ensues. Why? Because you went against God, you didn't maintain the corruption, is deep, and a lot of people get hurt. And sooner or later, see, Hashem, he falls back, he lets the world do what they want to do, free will. But eventually, it's like a father who has his two kids fighting all the time, so he leaves them alone. But eventually, they're choking each other, about to kill each other. He's got to come and make justice, separate them, punish them, and fix the problem. This is exactly what God is doing with this world. He's letting everybody go about their business, sitting back, judging, doing what he needs to do to make sure the world sustains itself. And then in the end, eventually, you're forcing his hand to intervene. And when he intervenes... <laughs> Typhoon Hayan, just go look at that and you're going to see what happens when Hashem intervenes. Scary, 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 scary. 
He'll take that house that you made that took you five years to make and he'll lift it off the ground with water in less than 10 minutes. Your whole house will just float away. What are you going to do? Nothing. God is going to show you that when he wants to flex his might and his power, forget about it. Forget about it, bro. Forget about it. Forget about it, bro. Scary. Scary, 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 scary. He owns every element of this earth. That means the sun that's in his hand. He can do whatever he wants with the sun. If he wants the sun to go to, I don't know, 150 degrees for a week straight, that's what will happen. You understand? <laughs> you don't get it, yo. You don't get Oh, I love you. You see? Now, let me get deep for a second, yo. Seriously, man. First of all, don't ever insult anybody, let alone the nation of Israel or somebody, God forbid, that's handicapped. That's why I tell all these comedians that I meet, like, yo, stop making jokes about handicapped people. You're going to have a handicapped son. I'm telling you right now, God forbid, I don't wish that on you, but I'm just letting you know, yo. Don't make fun of people like that. It's dangerous, man. No, 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 no. I have a poetic license. I can do whatever I want. It's a comedic license. I can do whatever I want. I can do... It's just comedy. No, it's real life because the words that come out of your mouth, they're getting judged in heaven. So if you make a joke about somebody handicapped and there's somebody in the audience that has a handicapped brother and it hurts his feelings and destroys his heart and he goes home and he cries about it and you go out with your friends drinking... Trying to hook up with chicks <laughs> Your judgment's gonna be harsh My brother Trust me when I tell you They're not letting nothing slide bro they not Unless you have a card That says you did chuva for that sin They're not letting nothing slide bro The opposite They might judge it harsher bro Cause you a real jerk You a real arrogant You a real rude You know people are so funny yo with power, how they love power. My goodness. No God, no wisdom. You know, if you had God in your heart, you would run away from power. You would run away from it. They would come to make you the head of the school. No, 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 I don't really want that job. I'm just good where I am. I help the kids. I'm fine. If you knew a little Torah, that's how you would answer. You wouldn't run for the fame, you know what I mean? That's really what they're going to show at the end of the day. Social media, TikTok, all this garbage. You came to this world to bring fame to your name. You should have brought fame to God's name. That's the problem, bro. (laughs) You running around trying to bring fame to your name. Bring fame to his name. It'll be a lot better off for you, bro. Trust me. Don't insult anybody in the nation of Israel, bro. I'll tell you a beautiful story with Avahu and insulting. So they walk by a city here. And I think it was Rav Shimon Ben Lakish. So they were walking by the city and they were about to enter it. And Avahu said, ah, it's a wicked, dirty, nasty road. City, like he dissed the city like raw. So all of a sudden, (laughs) Rav Lakish bent down, grabbed sand and shoved it in his mouth. And said, watch your mouth. And watch how you talk about the children of God. Like that, yo. Go read in the Gemara. If that didn't happen like that, yo. Teaching us. Don't disrespect, yo. Even the criminal. Yo, listen, listen. Let me break it down to you, bro. Even if he went again. You see, this is so deep what I'm about to tell you. Are you allowed to embarrass another human? Because there's an exception to the rule that you can embarrass somebody. So the answer is yes. If they try to embarrass the name of God. Now we have to analyze it, yo. If the Torah is all about humbleness, right? Do we have permission to even embarrass the dirtiest criminal? To insult him? To put him down? To spit on his grave? Do we have the permission to do that? No. 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 How How do I know? Because we learn from God, right? The rapist, he gets hung and buried. Why? Because he already got his punishment Why? Because God doesn't want to embarrass him There's no need to insult You see, this is what the people don't understand Admonish, absolutely Insult, never Never So here, I'm going to tell you right now My nation, who I love Like my brother Because they're part of my heart And part of my soul Right? They're not so good 
they're not so good. That's not insulting them. That's just saying what it is. If I said they were arrogant, they were rude, they were this, they were that, and then start giving you examples of how nasty and fine, that would be already insulting. We're not trying to insult. We're trying to let you know that if you don't improve your actions and work on your midot, and you keep walking around with this arrogance, this rudeness, this loving the power. Let me give you an example. I know a few people who do this, yo. Like, a lot of them are bosses. Yo, they just won't say what it is, bro. Like, you need something, and they answer you so vaguely, yo. And, like, you know they know the answer. But, yo, they just won't tell you. Yo, he's gonna be for three days, yo. Yeah, I'll get back to you. I don't really know. Get out of here, yo. This is so dumb. Why? Because they like the power. You see, in the end, the power is going to be taken away from these people, bro. It's going to be bad. It's going to be real humbling. You know what I mean? That's why they say that sometimes people come back as a tree, as a leaf. Who does arrogant, rude people? Why? Because now you're a tree. You can't move. You're open to the elements, the rain. That these kids will walk by, spit on you, carve their name in you. Birds will peck at you. Birds will live on you. <laughs> you understand? You have no rest, no peace. Why? Because you are arrogant. You understand? Stone and Amora, arrogant. They stamp it, arrogant. Some of the bosses I had, arrogant. You know what I mean? Not even to insult them, yo. I think if I sat them down <laughs> and we talked just open and real, they would admit they're arrogant, yo. And you know what the craziest thing is? All they would have to do, this is crazy. Because with me personally, like, I'm a man of God. So, like, I understand, you know? Like, I also make mistakes, you know what I'm saying? That's what I love with, uh, who was it, Rabbi el When he said this guy, Rekha. He looked at some guy who's ugly. I don't know, maybe he saw him. But there's sometimes I would, God forbid, I would never say that about a person. Because it's so insulting. You're going to learn from this story. But, yo, there are some people, you look at them and you can see anti god You can see it written all over their face. That's almost Rekha, bro. Empty. What are you? If you don't have God in your heart, you're not empty? I think you are. But again, we don't want to insult. But anyway, so he insulted this guy and told him, Rekha. Oh yeah, Rekha. Like that, you're making fun of the way I look? Go complain to God. Because he's the one that made me. So right away, Rabbi Lazar realized he did something wrong. So he came and asked for Mechila. Please, please forgive me. The guy wouldn't forgive him. They went to the town. Everybody came out to greet Rabbi Lazar, kissing his hand. This, that. So this guy goes, this is your rabbi? Shame on you. He's a rude. He's arrogant. You know, he went nuts. So he wouldn't forgive. And Rabbi Azar is like on his hands and knees begging, please forgive me. Yo, I made a mistake. He wouldn't forgive. So then finally one wise man walked up to him and said, you know, when you forgive, you'll be forgiven. Don't you have some sins? I'm sure you do. There's a great way for you to erase your sins. Just forgive him. So he did that's a dope story, you know what I mean? Again, the power. <laughs> if they would just, yo, say sorry. Like, yo, coach, my bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I let the power get to my head. I'll be like, no problem, bro. I give him a pound and chill. It's all real, man. It doesn't matter to me, bro. It's all from God. Whatever you did, like Yosef said, yo. Whatever you did to me was ordained from God. And look what happened. Right? Who knows? One day they might see me rise up and they're going to know God is backing me. And then they'll come. I don't even need them to come. That's the beauty. I want them to come for their own soul to save it. You know why? Because when they save their soul, it helps my soul. How deep is that? Yo, think about what I just told you, yo. That's a good message that I need to spread throughout the nation of Israel. That call Israel out of Israel and Zer, right? Each Jew is responsible for the other. It's like one soul, one family. You know what I mean? So when you mess up, that hurts my soul. When I mess up, that hurts your soul. So why are we going to hurt each other's souls? You know what I mean, my brother? Let's just do the right thing. Let's make peace. Seek peace and pursue it. I'll be willing to sit down with you man to man and talk it out always. Because it's for the sake of God, be. You know what I mean? That's, that's what it really is, man. At the end of the day, if you're really about God, you're going to go to the ends of the earth. Spend all your money. Run around day and night sweating with no rest to make peace. And I 
got better advice for you. Make peace from now. So you never get into the situation where you would have to run around to make peace. He give you some good advice in life. Don't rely on people. You know that saying that says when you want something done right, do it yourself? Great saying. Because once now you put your faith in people, good luck. Good luck, yo. He's not going to care about that task the way you do. And if you pay him, okay, then he might do it. And even then, he's not going to care about it like you do. Do it yourself. Because when people have control over you, watch out. Like my mother says, I call her King Solomon's sister. You want peace in your life? Don't tell your business to nobody. The minute you tell your business, go check in your life. The minute you tell your everybody has an opinion. Some people might use that information against you. It might take five years and they'll sit you something that you told them five years ago against you. <laughs> That's why I keep my friends to a minimum. You know what I mean? More friends, more problem. More money, more problem. More Torah, no problem. You know what I mean? Work it out in your head, man. And understand that God is the greatest. I love you forever, Hashem. And I love that you love me. I love that I feel you in my heart. I love making these videos for you. For you, for me, for your nation, for your children. The reason why God doesn't want you to insult his children is because if you had a kid that was bad and I insult not me, God forbid, but if anybody insulted them, it would hurt you. Even though you knew your child was bad, it would still hurt you, you know what I mean? So that's why God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to boost each other up. He wants, yeah, he might punish his child and he has the right to do whatever he wants and meet out whatever punishment he wants. But you, as the son, have to show him that you love his other child. I'll give them the love by praying for them and for going the sin that they did against you. If somebody sins against you, silence is the best remedy. Trust me when I tell you, yo. That's what King David says. That's what King Solomon says. And that's what God sent. Penetrate my heart with your holy word and keep it there. Keep it there and guide me. That you should always be inside of my heart and inside of my soul like you are right now. Guiding me on a path of peace and humbleness so I don't get insulted. What did my mother say? A humble person? Here, now she's about to tell you what a humble person is. A humble person never gets insulted. You got mad, you got insulted. You got angry, you got insulted. You felt some type of way, you got insulted. That's what makes the prophets so great. They're humble. That's why God chose them to be prophets, shepherds, taking care of the animals. You know what I mean? I like that, yo. I love saying Brachat Amazon, yo. I can break down. Let me just tell you some quick things about Brachat Amazon that I love. I love when they say the merciful one may be praised on his glorious throne. The merciful one may be praised on heaven and earth. The merciful one may be praised to every generation. The merciful one may he be glorified to us forever and ever. The merciful one may he lead us speedily upright to our land. The merciful one may he make peace amongst us. The merciful one may he give us our sustenance with respect, not with disgrace. Comfort, not with distress. The merciful one may he elevate the pride of his people. The merciful one. May he bless me. Yo, Brachat Hamazon, bro. If you really break it down, bro, it's like the only Brachat that you're like commanded to say from the Torah, the Araita. And it's like, yo, it's deep, man, because it's such a deep prayer, man. You're like so close to God in that prayer. And then you're understanding, like, yo, I love when it says, make peace amongst us. I love when it says, break the yoke of oppression speedily from our neck. And then the next line is, may the merciful one. Turn us speedily upright to our land. Oh, I like that, yo. What else is there? Oh, what it says at the end. It's, I've never seen a righteous man or his children desperately begging for bread. All day he is gracious and lends, and his children are blessed. That's why you never saw him desperately begging for bread. Get the point? I love that connection. Now I reverse it in the verse. To show you that it's a blessing, not a curse. Yo, Brachat Amazon is 
dope. Dope, dope, dope. And I'm just praising God that He gave us food, that He gave us life. Bring us close to the days of Mashiach, the reconstruction of the Holy Temple. <laughs> ah, Kaddish Baruch I love you so much. And what else can I tell you about Brachat Amazon? How the Ashkenazi Sidor took out the verse about put fear in my heart so I shall not sin. It's not in the Ashkenazi Sidor. At least it wasn't in the one that my friend showed me. And I told him that it says put fear in my heart so I shall not sin. Because he's telling me, don't fear God. It's not a good thing to fear God. So I'm giving him proof after proof why you should fear God, bro. How crazy. He's still arguing with me. That's it. That's it. When a wicked spirit enters your head and convinces you of the untruth, and now convince you that this is the truth. Don't talk about fear. We don't talk about fear in Judaism. We're not going to pressure me to love God. Yo, you can love God all you want. Fear is part of the love. I love that, yo. Let me break down what I just said to you so you could go deep with me. Fear, right? Love, love. Love is the essence. It's the essential. It's the nucleus. It's everything. The love. But inside that love is fear. Because if I love you, I fear you. How? How? Because I fear you. Because I don't want to let you down. Because I love you. I'm afraid that I might do something wrong. Right? Real love is that I don't want any, any negativity around you ever. Like, I love you like my baby, right? So if I had a baby, I'd love him. Why? Because I'm afraid, God forbid, will something will happen to him. So I protect him, so I shelter him. That's love. I love that Hashem, and I love you for giving me that. And when I listen to this later, and I get a chill, because I know how real it is, y'all. Hold my hand, and let me take you to the promised land. Soon I'm going to be there. God knows what's in store But I will tell you what's definitely in store Torah Working on my mitot Being a better son Being a better teacher <laughs> I love you Akadosh Baruch Hu, And may you bless my after school boys and girls club Coming up May you put your holy hand on it Get me and my boy 20 kids And maybe even a little bit more In a bigger place I'm blessed that I cut this bar hole so I could save the souls of the ones that you want. I'm putting a lot of you, I'm not here to disrespect anybody, put anybody down, but the job ain't getting done, you know what I mean? So I could do my part, it's just a small part. I'm not trying to insult anybody, I cut this bar hole. I just want to preface that because Nehemiah said the leaders before me failed. So I shut, they took his book and called it the book of Ezra. Yo, do you even understand what I'm telling you, bro? Like, you have to be careful. So, like I said, yo, it's, I just want to help the children that need it. And I know that there are kids out there that go to school, that after school could come to my school to teach them how to really get schooled in the game of life. Make them better people. Make them more hospitable. Make them more courteous. Make them more charitable. Make them more kind. Make them more respectful. Make them more grateful. Make them better people. That's what's going to happen when you send your kid to my after school camp. He will become a better person. He'll love life. He'll embrace life. He'll get a better perspective on what it means to be alive. He'll start trying to keep Shabbat because he knows that God made the world in six days and rested on the seventh. And he wants to proclaim in God's holy name a declaration to his nation that he created the world in six days and rested on the seventh so I'm going to do the same that's how he's going to talk and you're going to be impressed get him to love himself more get him to respect his parents yo I could take a kid with the help of God and make magic and change him from an up tight rude nasty arrogant Kid into a nice kid. You might not be the best, but you'll see a major improvement, yo. With the ability to improve more. Because once I implant this knowledge and wisdom in his head, he's gonna grow. And it's something that a lot of schools can't give him. They just need that touch. You need that one person that knows how to connect with the kids. You need that one person 
that knows what to say, how to say, when to say, and what not to say. You know what I mean? And I told my boy, and I'm going to tell you, my after school camp, what's going to separate it from every other camp, God willing, is the fact it's going to be all about the kids. Let me repeat that again, yo. And you can follow this business model if you want to be successful. It's all about the kids, man. And I have good experience with children. Like when I used to tell the kids in my class, girls first. And the boys used to go, oh, that's not fair. I said, it's absolutely fair. Because I watch you guys. It was my first day in school. I said, I watched y'all. When the girls go to drink, you push them out of the way. You grab their jackets. You run in front of them. You you hold the spot so your friend can drink while they have to wait. I said, that's not going to happen no more. I said, I don't even know how they even let this happen. So I said, from now on, after PE is done, I'll let y'all go. Run to the water fountain. It's all love. Your kids, I get it. But I'm telling you right now, girls first. And I remember I didn't even have to go look. And then when I come look, I'd see the girls would be first and the boys would wait. And I explained to them, I was like, yo, you're going to get blessed for that, yo. What do you think? You think now you're going to let the girls go first and you're losing? Because I remember this one kid, he was like sitting in the corner all sad. I was like, what are you sad about right now in Shabbat? If you a prince, you're doing a mitzvah. You're helping the children of God, bro. You don't get it. You don't get it. Lift up God's children. He'll lift you up. What do you think, man? This is the way I talk to kids and they get the point, man. You know what it is, man? And I know there's others like me out there, but to be successful as a teacher when it comes to Torah, life, and sports, or whatever you do, is you have to really, you, 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 the teacher, have to really love God, bro. You have to really, you can't fake it. You have to really love God, because when you really love God, you're going to really love His children. You're going to want to see them succeed. You're not going to see a Jew do something good and get mad. I remember one time, yo, I got upset. And this dude got happy. And I remember I looked at him. I said, man, you see, I work on my midot. I took care of my anger. And here, in a moment of weakness, I got upset. I banged on the table. I just couldn't take it. It was for the name of God. Whatever you want. It's not fine. I failed. I wasn't humble. And you got happy. You saw a Jew fail and celebrated. Yo, how evil could you be? He didn't like that. <laughs> Don't reprimand the wicked, bro, because they're going to hate you. I promise you that's so true, bro. you better off just smiling, walking away, and removing yourself from the situation than to sit him down and try to correct him because they'll take it the wrong way. And I've done it with love to arrogant people. It doesn't work. It doesn't work like my mother says. They're only going to change when they look in the mirror and throw up. Then they'll change. When they're sick of who they are, then they'll change. But if you see him smiling and walk around like everything's all good, he'll never change. You understand? No, a few like this. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Come on, man. How hard is it to work on your meat? It's hard, but it's worth it. You'll feel good about yourself. You'll feel proud. You know what I mean? Ever rejoice when you see another Jew fail. That's why God says, even your enemy's donkey, you should help. Why? Why? Why would God tell you to help your enemy's donkey? Because he wants you to humble yourself. That's why. For you to know that he's running the show. So there were these two guys fighting over a piece of lamb. And a rabbi happened to walk by. So they both look at the rabbi and they go, hey, rabbi, get over here. <laughs> so the rabbi walks over and goes, hey, what's wrong? So they both start claiming the land. No, this is my land. No, it's my land. No, it's my... So they're looking at the rabbi like to render a decision. So the rabbi looked at them and he goes, give me a second. He gets down on his hands and knees and he puts his ear to the land. So they both look at the rabbi like he's crazy. Yo. So the rabbi gets up. So they start mocking the rabbi. What did he say? You spoke to the ground, huh? Well, how did he talk like? Did he talk like Moshe Rabbeinu? You know, they're like mocking him. So the rabbi said, yes, I was communicating with the ground and he has a message for you. And he told me to tell you it's not yours and it's not yours. But one day both of you will be his. Have a nice day. <laughs> and he bounced at these two arrogant, rude people. How do I know they were arrogant and rude? Because I told you already in the beginning of the talk 
that they were fighting with each other. You know who fights? Arrogant people. A humble person will never fight. The opposite. A humble person will seek peace and pursue it. A humble person will not talk back. A humble person will not yell and scream. A humble person will know that if you're blocking him from entering, he'll just go somewhere else. That God made it happen like that. And he'll provide another avenue for you to take care of what you need to take care of. It's all love, yo. Watch your back. You know what I mean? When you're committing sins. Because if Hashem wants to get every angel in heaven to pick up a stone and throw it at your head. You think I'm joking? I'm not. Hashem has that power, obviously, to do whatever he wants, yo. I'm just letting you know, yo. If you want to play with God, go ahead. I couldn't even tell you good luck. Because I know there's no luck in it. It's so bad, yo. So bad, so chaos, so ruin, famine, destruction, yo. What would make Hashem withhold the rain, yo? Think about that. For arrogance. For arrogance. He's going to make you submit and beg for food. And then he's going to show you the difference between a human and a God. And then you're going to submit to his glory and his grace. And it should have never had to come to that, yo. You have to go through the death of the world to respect God. Just do it right now as we're listening to this talk, yo. What's so hard? I respect him. I love him. I do my best to be the best I could be. Forgive me for my sins. Elevate me. Punish the wicked. Raise the righteous. Bring Mashiach. And bless me for eternity. Just like that. You can always talk to God. And pour out your heart like water. Oh mighty warrior. Gideon didn't insult B'nai Israel. The opposite. He prayed for them. He asked God, where's your mercy? How come you're not helping us with Midian? I know we don't deserve it. Our ancestors also didn't deserve to be freed from Egypt, but yet you freed them. Do the same for us, a country's world. Save us Because we need you You know why I feel secure That in the end everything's going to be okay Because he's our father He's our mother And he's The one that loves us More than anyone Do you know the love between a mother and a son A father and a daughter Steep Chosen to be the nation to guide the other nations to know that God is running the show bro let me tell you how it goes bro so you can know it for the rest of your life forever for all time put your ego low let it go and know that God is running the show bro just like that. On the beat. Love you, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and I will always love you. Place peace in my heart. Bless the nation of Israel, and bring Mashiach now. Love you, Hashem.